Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Allison. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's been a while. It's been a while. I honestly kind of have like first day jitters feel a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then also like I'm buzzing hard from the iced coffee feelings a little bit. But I think it's just excitement to be back, really. I know. Yeah. Last night I actually watched a couple of episodes. You did? Of, yeah. yeah. What did you do? Well, I normally don't, but my mom, my mom went to the library's YouTube channel to watch oh, the this program I did this week. Yes. And then it just kind of rolled into our last episode and then it rolled into the one you did with Audrey. So I just, I watched yes. those two and it kind of just got me in the mood again and excited okay. for the year. You've so, watched Lattes with Library. I did. It's so weird, but yeah. But yeah, Leah, your bullet journal program, that was really fun to watch. I encourage anybody who, you know, is at all interested. Um, even if you do your, your own bullet journal already, it's I mean, actually probably especially if you do your own already. It's fun to hear other people's ideas and what they do. And if you're like curious about what a bullet journal is, um, I feel like you did a very good overview that made it not too intimidating, but also aspirational. So yeah. if, if, anything, if a bullet journal is anything, it's probably at least a little bit aspirational. I think so too. Like I look at some of the things that other people do and I'm like, Ooh, maybe someday I'll get to that point. But right. you know, for the most part, I just do what works for me. Um, yes. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. Uh, but yeah, so that was, that was fun. I've had a, a busy week and it just, oh, a crazy yeah. morning. So yeah, you mentioned you had a crazy morning. Um, um, I, I went to make myself um, a mug of hot, co uh, hot chocolate this morning because, sure. um, you know, I'm still in the, 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 the wintry Christmas spirit. So I went to make a mm -hmm. mug of hot chocolate. And one of the things that I did that I don't normally do is I went ahead and I put my marshmallows in like with the, the chocolate mix. Um, okay. And then... I usually make my hot chocolate with milk, but I'm out of milk. <laughs> End of my cup and I heard this crack and then just chocolate all over the the counter. Um, and I'm like, my cup is intact. And I like, I pick up my cup and I'm just like, what is, it had cracked. But it stayed together, but it was enough of a crack that the hot water just poured through. So I had like this chocolate water like all over my counter and I take my cup over and I dump it in the sink. Oh no. And then I got like this sticky marshmallow all over the inside of the sink because of course the marshmallow had started melting and it just Oh my gosh. It was, it was a wonderful mess to clean up for sure. It's really weird to have like a hairline crack or something that Still, the mug still stays yes. together. Yeah, it was so strange because I'm just, and I even I rinsed it out and I'm just like, I I, went, I could feel it just a little now, bit. Just like yeah, now it it's like the joke, it's the joke mug that you give to guests, you know, like the dribble cup, and that's just yeah. the joke mug, and they keep you know feeling like what what is this? Yeah, <laughs> that actually I had a food processor. I was making uh, cream of mushroom soup, and I the part I had tasted, it tasted so good. And I was so excited. And I was like, going to go to do the blend in the food processor. And, like I pour it in and I can, I like, I, I thought I'm just like over poured or something. And I saw some on the counter and then I hit blend. <laughs> Turns out there's a crack in the back of that food processor and just <laughs> cream of mushroom soup was just like oozing and spraying out into the counter. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. That, that is gross to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. gross to clean up and disappointing. Yes. Andrea says she hates sticky stuff. I do too. I really don't like that sticky. So that wasn't fun to clean. And did you good morning, Chris. Up? Happy New Year. What? Did you get it all cleaned up or is it like waiting in your sink for you? I, I did get it all cleaned up, but it was just like, this is not what I need right now. It's 10 15. Right, right. right. I'm glad that, that it's not still waiting for you when you get yeah. out. <laughs> like, if I leave this, my mom will find it and she will be mad at me. So I better go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, you said you were still in the Christmas spirit. I was going to say I am too, actually, because um, we're actually doing our family Christmas Zoom tonight. Oh, um, yeah. My brother and his fiance, I may have mentioned before, live in D.C. And so it, they're both from Ohio, though, so they both have family here. And I think it was kind of like kind of up in the air for a little bit about whether or not they were going to come and they decided not to. Um, but 
because of that, because of delays with the mail, everyone only just got, we decided to mail Christmas presents. So everyone only just got them this week. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're gonna open presents on Zoom and you know hang out. Um, however, they're gonna open presents on Zoom. My presents for my brother came, like I feel like on New Year's Eve, or yeah, New Year's Eve, something like that. And um, even though I was actually the one who had the idea to open presents on Zoom, I just became overwhelmed with excitement that there were presents in the mail for me. I had all the paper ripped off of them. Uh, his fiance knitted me like a ear warmer thing. I had that on my head. I was eating the cookies that he sent and I was had the book open in my lap reading it when, and I'd like texted him pictures of it. Thank you so much. And he responded back. So I thought we were doing that Zoom thing. And I like was, I was like, I had cookies in my mouth. I was reading the book and I was like, oh yeah, that. <laughs> I had already admitted it. Otherwise, I probably just would have wrapped them back up and been like, oh, thank you. Because it was like the, the thing we were going to do together. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. so actually, I apparently am like four years old and can't <laughs> not unwrap a present. We're, we, my, I'm going to do Christmas tomorrow. Uh, my sister and her family are coming up. Um, okay. We're going to have an outside Christmas, even yeah. though it's going to be cold. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping tonight I can go find fire pits somewhere. Um, so we can be outside and a little bit, yes. um, it, I know my, my mom's very disappointed, you know, she wants to spend more time with, with the kids, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's been a very weird year. Like I, I sat and I realized that this was my very first Christmas in Lancaster. I've lived in Lancaster since 2006 mm -hmm. and this is my first Christmas in Lancaster. Cause I always wow. go home. Welcome. <laughs> So but um, it was also probably one of only a few Christmases with so much snow. Right? Yeah. And it was exciting. Yeah. I definitely gave my brother a hard time. This was my first Christmas day, I think. I could be wrong, but I think it was my first Christmas day without my brother because the only one Christmas day I had to stay when I didn't live in Ohio, I had to stay in Indiana because I worked the next day, but he came and saw me for Christmas. So mm -hmm. I think first Christmas day he and I weren't together so naturally you know you've got to give him a hard time about that and then when the snow came it was like you know look what you're missing out on I was like we could be the oldest kids down at OUL sledding <laughs> there was a it was really cute I took a walk down there and there was like a line of kids it was almost like a theme park or something and then I picture like my brother and I like standing there with like sleds we don't even fit on to go down the hill but we just we don't get snow that often we yeah haven't gotten Christmas snow that often I would feel like we would have yeah. had to take advantage of that opportunity <laughs> um in the comments, they're admiring your pig art. Oh, the pig art is new. Speaking of Christmas, um, <laughs> I got this for Christmas. It is a pig in like a scarf with, it's like a flower crown, but I don't think there's any flowers on it. I think it's, it's more like a wintry <laughs> branch, um, but I love it very much. That's and, awesome. you know, I'll try to update the comments because it was from one of the, the stores downtown. My mom bought it for me downtown. And so I'll update the comments with it. I think she actually even called and had them put it back for her to come pick up because she knew I would like it. So anyway, I'll, I'll put that in them in the comments because it is a local purchase. Thank you. Um, if we're talking about animals, can I show you a couple of my Christmas Yes. Things? Yes. For those of you who haven't been around for a while, I collect rubber ducks. Um, this is a sea turtle rubber duck. Oh. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this one is a skunk. Oh my gosh, it's tail. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this one I think is awesome. It's Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> Notorious RB. Ginsburg. Oh my gosh. Ginsburg. <laughs> oh my gosh, her glasses. Does she have a gavel as well? Or? She has a gavel and her collar and her oh little gosh. green earrings. I mean, like, it's got That's it adorable. All. That's yeah. really adorable. It so, looks more Ruth like Ginsburg. <laughs> it looks more like Ruth Bader Ginsburg than you would expect a rubber duck. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the company Celebra Ducks. They do some really amazing. That is really so cool cute. Ducks. I yeah. love it. Well, so. it looks like we each got, you know. <laughs> We each got, you know, the the animal gifts that we need. Because I also got, I have a, like a pocket pig calendar at work. Those like little tiny pigs and they set them up like doing things, activities and stuff. Um, and I had one last year in my office. So I asked for one again this year or something similarly cute. And I got another one of those. 
um, which I don't know if everyone at work likes them as much as I do, but every time I turn over the month, I like make everyone look at it and I carry it around. So they pretend they do. They at least humor me. So I, you know, told everyone we have a new pocket pig calendar, but there's like the pig's wearing like a sweatband around his head and they're playing tennis. I just, I can't. <laughs> Getting fit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't that baby, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> but very dark. Um, the other the other animal calendar I got was um, a little bub calendar. I don't know if you are familiar with little bub. Little bub actually passed away, but little bub is a Bloomington, Indiana hero, hometown of Bloomington, Indiana, where you and I both went to uh, mm -hmm. library school. And so um, little bub made calendars every year. But little bub passed away, and I guess they must have enough of a stock of photos. And um, well, how could you not take a billion photos of little bub? I know. I know Lil Bob also, for anyone who's interested, <laughs> why would you be? Also has an album, a musical album. Um, I don't know if I don't know if we own it or not. I know that I cataloged it when I worked at the library in Bloomington, but again, hometown hero. I think it might be called Science and Magic. Um, or at least that's kind of like the tagline to it. And it's a lot of sort of like spacey sounds, and then sometimes there's like Lil Bob vocalizations in the background. <laughs> little ball vocalizations or or perhaps if we have someone on here from the library today maybe uh can check our catalog i i would not consider a failure of our consortium to not own that cd but I, yeah that is a very niche audience it's I a niche market that's for sure <laughs> anyway it's like mary's mary's got us <laughs> Mary's got a link for us anyway. Yeah, a link about Lil Bub at the very least. So yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got to catch up for Christmas stuff. And I know we said we were gonna, you know, it's new year, we're here new. And I opened, even opened a new container of my um, chai tea latte mix, which is often what is in this large cup. And um, for the first time ever, I just happened to like glance down, <laughs> shame on me at the nutrition label. And I, I saw how many grams of sugar are in one serving of this. And it is 30. It is 30 grams of sugar are in one serving of this chai tea latte mix. And so I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to alternate this to something else. Also, maybe that's why I'm always so hyper after doing this show. You know what? It's, it's the, the energy that you need to get through this show. Because this takes a lot. Um, people think we're just sitting here talking. But um, this is hard work, right? This is really, really <laughs> It takes a lot, it does, it, you know, it takes burns a lot of calories for mm -hmm. one, it takes a lot of energy. Also just for um, every, so everybody knows there's some utility work going on outside my house and they've crept closer as we've been doing the show. So just hopefully the noise all stays outside, but. Are the green and flashing lights driving you yes, crazy? There are green and yellow flashing lights in my peripheral vision. And uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing and it's totally fine. I'm glad they're getting the work done, but just in case. The noise comes on to here all as well. And if I need to mute myself, just tell me and I will do that. And Leah can take over for a while. <laughs> no, I, I, I was, you were talking about the bullet journal program I did earlier this week. And if people are interested, it's in the Facebook feed somewhere on the library page or the library's YouTube page. But it was so awkward because I've gotten so used to having someone to talk to. Yeah. Like this is a conversation that there's back and forth or pauses yeah. with that bullet journal program. It was just me talking nonstop for 40, I think 45 minutes or something. And it was just, it was, it was such a different experience yeah. than this. And it's very different than leading a program with people In person. You ask them questions and you'll stop yeah. and you can explain things better because you can see, oh, people are confused, but it's just you talking into the void, it, it's, it was very, very different. And I really missed you. Aww, <laughs> like, so much easier to do with Allison. I actually thought of that um, when I was watching it, not thought that you might miss me, but I thought about, I wonder how that is because being on here, I know, I know how this feels and you, you don't have people in person to give you any kind of reaction. And on right. there, at least you had, I think you had Mary with you reading the comments. So that was, yeah, I could exactly. hear her in the background and that was, at least you had her to look at well, you know, but. I actually couldn't see her like because like, how the setup was and she was yeah. back far away because I wasn't wearing a mask because 45 minutes of talking with a mask right. on just so she had to be like very far away. Okay. 
like I had to like look around the iPad that we were using to record to see oh, there. Yeah. It was a little, it was a little awkward. Um, and I kept, when I watched it with my mom, I realized I kept forgetting to look at the iPad. Um, I'm just like, looking over here, I'm looking down there, but like with you during this, I'm looking at you as I'm talking. And because you're like mm -hmm. right there in the center of my screen, I'm kind yeah. of looking at the camera-ish. Yeah. Um, it's a little off, but it's not really. The whole thing is so much Yes, the whole thing is so much more natural, even though in many ways it is still not natural at all. But we've overcome that little that <laughs> hurdle and it feels much more natural. Yes. Uh, it looks like we found something on Hoopla. Run the Jewels remixed one of their albums with all the instruments replaced with cat muse and sounds, including some of Lil Bub. So if you're really in to ambient cat noises, <laughs> then I would recommend clicking on that. You just, and the beauty of Hoopla is that it's a free, it's free. It's from the library, so it's free. And you can check it out. You can see if you like it. And there's not the high risk scenario of purchasing that album and deciding you're not into ambient cat noises. Talking about animal noises, can I just tell you a little story? Sorry, Please. we haven't talked nothing about the library yet. I have this whole list of stuff. I know. Um, my dog had to get a haircut this week because he, although only 13 pounds, is a squiggling, wiggling monster when you try to groom him. And it's really, yeah. really bad. Um, I. Oh, no. Leo froze for me. Unclear. Um, well, groomers won't work with him. I'm back. You froze for me, but maybe I froze for everyone. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Continue. Sorry. But um, he has been grumping at me all week. Like, ah, 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 ah. Like, he because you wanted to cut his hair. What? Because you cut his hair. Yes. Like he is mad at me right now. Um, I don't know if he will forgive me. Um, he's 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 kind of gotten to the point where he will. He's spending more time like coming over and getting comfort because haircuts are very traumatic for him but um but yeah i picked him up the entire drive home oh my God. Like, he didn't growl it was this is weird grumbling noise that was crazy it was just for you and it, you knew exactly what it meant and my mom I, I went to work the other day my mom said he was fine all day i came home and he started it again like, no way yeah. wasn't he mad at you recently about something like maybe like last month or something. I feel like there was another situation because I remember you being like, well, he's kind of being normal again. Um, I feel like maybe you like made him, I don't remember. It just, it sounds like this may not be the only time he has. has I, think, uh, I think we had to give him a bath. I think that may have been it. Okay. It was not like a bath. And um, I think I might, I had to cut a mat off of him mm. and, uh, he won't come near me like for three days after he sees yeah, me. Yeah, I think that that was what it was. Cause I remember he wasn't making the noise cause that's hilarious. And I would have remembered that, but I think he was, you were like, I don't know. He's still not, he's still not spending any time with me. Maybe yeah. he'll, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he will do that. He, he will still, he still has to sleep with me and he still has to be in whatever room I'm in. Mm -hmm. But he's not happy with me. <laughs> he makes sure I, I know it. That's really, really funny. Um, Chris wanted to know what our favorite Christmas gift book wise ever was ever to think about that for a minute. One, the first thing that came to my mind is not an actual book, but for saying book wise is just for several years of my teenagehood, um, I received just boatloads of Harry Potter related gifts because that was my, I remember one year we're sitting in the living room, you know, the wrapping papers everywhere. My dad's in his recliner and he was like, what would you have even, what would we have gotten for you if Harry Potter didn't exist? Because almost every single, I got Harry Potter Legos, I got Harry Potter figurines, I got Harry Potter decor. And there was this time before the movies. So that would have been not teenagehood, but more like, I don't know, a little bit earlier than that. Um, when they did not have, when it, all the promotion was book related. So they yeah. didn't have Daniel Radcliffe on things or anything like that. And there was in City Center Mall, a Warner Brothers store. And mm -hmm. Once the rights were sold for like making things like figurines, but before the stars were on them, um, 
this Warner Brothers store had these Harry Potter items for purchase and um, based on the book art and, you know, other people's art. And so for a few years there, I just got Harry Potter, everything, games, puzzles, just, just every, everything was Harry Potter related. So I think I would probably like that memory and that experience and that line from my dad and me sitting there thinking, I had no idea. I have no other interests. Right. Um, I think that kind of stays with me as being probably one of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I'm my favorite book gift ever. Um, that's really hard. Um, I think I have an answer, and it's really weird. Like I, I every year you, I get books for Christmas, um, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of a very funny one. one. One year, like my nephew, he was he was little, like three. He picked out this this like Harlequin romance, and he's like, "This is for 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 Taunty Lee." And my mom's like, "Maybe not that book. How about we look over?" No, 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 this one. And so I I got that book, and then like I was at my sister's house, so I made sure I he saw me reading that book. <laughs> Book. That's really um, cute. This is about, um, that cover just spoke to him. He was right? like, oh, "Yeah, it was about he loves a dashing rogue in a kilt it and no a shirt." It was what? It was a chic, not a not a rogue. He was a chic. Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I think probably one of my favorite book gifts, and this is ridiculous, um, was a dictionary. It's this. Um, Really big, yeah. really big, I mean, like over a thousand page dictionary that I love. And um, when I was a kid, when I was in second grade, I read the dictionary. I had this little oh. green hardback dictionary. Yeah. And, um, I carried around with me forever. I think I got up to like the M's, but uh -huh. I, you know, I would, I would just sit and read the dictionary. And, um, like one day we were in class and the teacher is like, does anyone know what serendipity means? I'm like, oh, oh I do. <laughs> and then like one day we were talking about pagodas. I'm like, I know what a pagoda is. And I, I'm like, I've even got a picture and because the, the dictionary had a picture. And like, I just, I, I've always loved dictionaries. Well, so. you've been a reference librarian your entire life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, that is so cute. It looks like we do have a comment. Do you want to read it or? Um, oh, I have one. When I was, Andrea says, when she was little, she would always go to the library on North Broad and check out Pumpkin Moonshine by Tasha Tudor at least every other library trip she would get it. When Tasha Tudor died in 2008, my parents got me Pumpkin Moonshine for Christmas and I cried. Oh, oh I love this story. That is so sweet. That is such a sweet library story, too. Yeah. Like, Christmas story and book story, but also it's sad. It's it's hard. Hard. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. And I don't know. Did you? I'm sure a lot of people had this. If anyone has one to share, did anyone else have a book that they checked out all the time from the library? You remember as a kid? I think specifically, like a picture book would be, you know, that you just seem to always want to be reading and could only maybe you could only get it there because it was something older and out of print. Yeah. Do you have anything like that? Um. Not from the library, no. Like, yeah, I'm trying to there think. Were, there were a couple of books that I had that I was like, oh, yeah. I have to read this. I have to read this. I love this story. And I yeah. um, can't even remember the name of it. It was Susie Squirrel and like the the bad squirrels came and they kicked her out of her house. But the toy soldiers helped her take back her home from the bad mm -hmm. squirrels. And like, I don't, I don't even, my sister tracked down a copy of that book when she, when she uh, had kids, because yeah, right. I read it so much as a kid. Yeah, um, and then I had this uh, book of nursery rhymes that I used to love for my mom. Mm -hmm. To me, I loved the nursery rhymes, and um, I always loved the one with um, the girl with a curl in the center of her forehead. Yes. When she was yes. good, very, very good, and when she was bad, she was bad. She was bored. Yeah, I love it I would just giggle when she read that one because it was I I was a rotten, rotten child. Through and through rotten. And it just it delighted me. That's awesome. I remember I had a book of of things like that, you know, those um whatever you call them, nursery rhyme types of things that my mom used to read to me. And I remember that one and I feel like my mom would have to back me up on this. I feel like that one also made me laugh 
but I was not rotten, but I did have, it's hard to imagine now, but I did have curls. I was just like, had this wild curly hair at some point came down. Um, so I did have that. And I think that's what would make me laugh. Cause I think my parents would, you know, like emphasize my little curl and it would make me giggle. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't, I of course had books that I had read, you know, I read over and over again at home, but from the library, the thing that sticks out to me is there was this DVD, well, no, I'm sorry, VHS. There was a VHS of um, the story of Rapunzel and it was like a live action thing. And I don't know who these people were. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I was obsessed with that VHS of Rapunzel, but I would check that out over and over again. And I'm sure it was a very like public broadcasty type of production. And I just remember like the husband climbing over the wall to the garden to get these radishes for his wife who was craving them. I remember her eating the radishes. And at that point in my life, I'd never eaten a radish and just like wondering like, what is, what is this radish? Um, and, <laughs> I actually, when I started here, I just checked to see, and it was a VHS tape, of course we don't have that, but I was like, what are our Rapunzel DVDs? Can I check this out again? And I'm like, no, it's gone and it's yeah. fine. But that's my that's my memory of repeated library checkouts that were only from the library. Yeah. I, Rumpelstiltskin, I don't know why I loved that story so much, but that was one that I used to um, have my mom read to me a lot. I loved the Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> One, yeah. It's a creepy one too, I think. Yeah, like, yeah. It's weird. Um, but yeah. I, I'm a weird kid. Let's see. Um, Chris says maybe he's weird, but he always loved the classics like Tom Sawyer and mm -hmm. Huckleberry Finn. And he always went to the local library in New Jersey and checked them out. But they had to be the real version, not the kitty versions. Like, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, not that there's any, I mean, the kitty, the kitty version, you know, is definitely going to be an introduction, you know, to something if you're not, you know, up to reading the regular version. But I do remember even, even when I couldn't read the regular version thinking like, I bet I'm missing out on something with this. Right. Like yeah. you just tell. <laughs> Um, and it looks like Patricia says, here's an old one for you. Rackety boom. We loved when dad read it to us. He memorized it. I don't know Rackety Boom. I don't know Rackety Boom either. I will say I loved having my dad read Dr. Seuss to me. Aww. He 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 read the Dr. Seuss books fabulously. Like Aww. it was it was one of those I loved having him read those to me. And I remember when my um sister um had kids, she got my dad uh Dr. Seuss books so he could practice. Um, oh my god. <laughs> So, I, as far as, again, I don't remember so much from the library, but I know one book that I read a ton with my mom is a book called A Chair for My Mother. And um, the mom is a waitress and it has really, really, really cool pictures. And the mom is a waitress and um, they save money in this jar for like the next thing that they're going to do, I think. But they have... Um, I think they save the money in the jar and then they buy this really nice chair and they sit in this chair and read together. But there's also a house fire in there and they lose everything and everyone comes together and gives them things. And then they get like a chair to sit in and snuggle in and read books again together. I don't obviously remember the arc of the story very well, but what the important part was that they had this chair that was like double size and they sat in it and read together. And that was like, I don't know, that was all, all, that's all I've ever needed. Clearly <laughs> that's still all I want to do, but um, and Patricia says that Rackety Boom was a uh, old blue truck. Oh, we'll have to look that up. And Andrea yeah. has been doing some research for me, and she included a link that I'm not going to click on now, but wondering, because I have to like, copy and paste it, and I don't trust myself to do that while on here. Um, but without closing this, and then right. that's where we be. Um, well, but thank you, Andrea. I will be doing that as soon as this is over and updating you on whether or not that that is the one. <laughs> and if, if it's if it's the type of thing I'm thinking of, it probably is available on YouTube, if anything, to watch. <laughs> and that would be really delightful. <laughs> it's amazing what you find. Um, I know. We did not talk about what we were planning to talk about. Okay. There's always next week. Right. And Carol said that she loved to read. Uh, oh, my mother. Oh, Carol, that's great. Maybe you can. Maybe you have more memory of of the straightforward plotline. Um, but I'm so glad <laughs> that someone else read that, and I don't. And I owned that wasn't a library one. That was one we owned a copy of. But I just and I still have my copy. I really loved that book, and the pictures are really great. I'm so happy to hear someone else had read it. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we can talk next week about the stuff that. The other stuff, I think we were going to talk about, you know, what are we looking forward to reading? Yeah. What's coming out? So if you guys want to like 
stew on that for the next week to talk about what's coming out in the coming months that we might want to be into reading, what new stuff is coming out. Um, I will say one thing that I did have written down in here because it won't be important. To, I know it's not important now, but the new <laughs> Philippa Gregory book is called Dark Tides. And just a funny thing, um, the, on the title page of that book, they misspelled her name. And uh, so there's a, I was like, especially with a book like this, you yeah. don't have to inspect it super closely. She's a very prolific author. I'm not like originally cataloging this item, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, but in the record, the orig someone originally looking at it, in the record, there was a note that was like on the title page, author's name appears as, and it has two L's instead of an, one L. And I looked in our copy and sure enough, it does. So anyway, just these people have to all of us. <laughs> How long has she been writing? Like that's long time. Yeah, like long how, do you, time. how do you suddenly mess that up? <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. She's been been around a long time. I have when I'm typing. There are times I mistype my own name. I put three R's in it the other day. But, <laughs> so I guess anyway. it's easy to do. But you would think someone somewhere should have caught that before. I know. Born. I thought so too. And just that came up to me this week. And I feel like the chances of me keeping this paper until next week are slim and I'll just have to start fresh, but that probably won't make it onto it. So I thought that I would just throw it in there now. <laughs> so we're on that, you know, new year, but same selves. We still make mistakes all the time. <laughs> Me? Never. Well, it was so great to see everybody again. I'm happy. Yes. To you. So glad you joined us this morning. And I'm yeah. really great being back with you, Alice. And I, I have missed this. Not I've missed it too. Uh, you, Leah. dying to do it on Christmas morning or anything, but yeah, yeah. like getting together like this is, I, I enjoy it. it it's too. nice to, uh, to end the week on Fridays. It's just a, I agree. Is it no, but, to you, so. I hope the com those of you watching or those of you in the comments um, agree. And yeah, think about next week, we're going to talk about some new stuff. So if you have some things that you know are coming out or, you know, are excited about, let us know. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>